Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is a tutorial about target cameras. So I will go and explain you pretty quick what we are creating in here. Um, what you not can see currently because it is in the center in here, there is a little target for us. And the camera we are creating for our games, be it a strategy game, be it a tower defense game or anything else, or even RPG games, um, they require well, a camera, and we want to have, or you can also create sandbox game with that. What we have is a camera which can pan around when we are holding down the middle mouse button. When we are right clicking, we are able to rotate, and when we are zooming in and zooming out, we are able to do so as well. Also, I'm gonna clamp the the um, angle in the well in the X rotation in this case to be not overwhelming in here so we are not able to make any errors or have any flickering around and same for the lower ones we are not able to go down in a specific angle as well so once again we can zoom in rotate around and pan by holding down the um, yeah the middle mouse button in this case uh, you can always change your this to any input you like and you prefer so this is what we are creating in this little tutorial. Let's get started. So I just uh, cleaned up the little scene and what we want to create at first is our camera rig. The camera rig um, is needs three different objects. The first one is going to be maybe a 3D object. You can later on get rid of the um, yeah, mesh render, for example, or you can even use an empty game object. I want to make sure that the reset this one to zero and scale this one down. I just want to make sure that I see something I can work with. So I'm gonna scale this to 0 0.3 in X, Y, and Z axis. Next one under that cube is, at first I want to call this one camera rake. You can call it whatever you like. You can use uh, even the name uh, target. What I also want to create is an empty game object, which is a child of um, our camera rake. Is that zero, zero, zero? I want to call this one rotation target. So we are rotating not the main target, but we want to rotate um, just this particular target. I'll explain meanwhile we are creating that stuff. And what I want to make sure is when you uh, just start a new scene, for example, I want to cr take uh, the main camera or just a new camera as you re yeah, like. And I put this one a um, as a child under the rotation target. So the camera is rotating when the rotation target is going to rotate and the camera rig is going to hold all the information when we are dragging this one around by panning. We just uh, set this one to wherever we like and please. Also I want to reset the um, information about the camera and I want uh, to set this one to maybe minus 10 and Z or something so I can see stuff better. Also, since that is already um, pretty close to the target, we're not able to see that um, the middle area. So I want to go into the rotation target and set the X rotation to be an angle of 10. Um, this is important so uh, we don't have later on any weird flickering or anything else. So this is just a rotation of the rotation target. Do not rotate the camera. The, rota the camera has nothing to do with that. The only thing what you might want to go in is uh, changing the Z axis to maybe minus 20 to have a better view, but that should be everything you should, oh, yeah, you're gonna do in here. What you now need to do is on the camera we need to create a little C-Sharp script which is determining, zooming, panning, all the other stuff. And I call this one just camera rake or camera controller. Once again, once a compiler is done compiling this little camera controller uh, script, you can see it always on the little icon on the right. Bottom corner, you can drag the camera controller directly to the camera. Do not drag this one onto the rack, otherwise you might have problems. So what we're gonna do is we control everything about this uh, complete camera rig from the main camera or the camera controller directly on the camera itself Meaning we're gonna rotate the rotation target and of course we're gonna go and move the camera rig um, From that particular camera part also later on you can create prefabs and use that camera wherever you like Just by importing this one as a new package or asset So once our camera controller is open, I just zoom in a bit so you see stuff better We don't need start, but we need updates. So keep this one open for the moment so what we want to do is at first we want to uh, declare two variables. Um, they need to be private or actually we don't need to have them public even if we could. It doesn't really matter at all. So the first one is going to be our rotation target. The one which is the second main. 
um, or one over or the parent of the uh, actual camera object and we need another transform we could also put them together it doesn't really matter uh, transform which is our base target or just the target so the one which is our rig in this particular case don't forget to save often what we need is uh, we need several variables for zooming we need one for panning and we need I believe one for um, orbiting just uh, some sensitivity values we're gonna need later on since it is a camera uh, which we want to target to a specific point we want to set in trans uh, in the update loop we want to say transform dot look at so we want to have this particular camera looking at a specific point and in this case it's going to be please look at our target so the car target once again is the camera rig the main item or the main um, yeah piece in here also, instead of we are using the start method, we're gonna use the awake method. Um, so void awake and in awake we want to declare the rotation target and the normal target. So what is the rotation target? So rotation... Oh, there is a typo. Um, so rotation target, I'm gonna copy this name in here, it's going to be equal to transform.parent. I want to make sure that the parent object of our camera is going to be the rotation target, which is the first parent in the hierarchy. Next one is going to be the normal target, or in this case the complete camera rig target, the first one we are just going to move around, which is going to be uh, the parent of our rotation target. So rotation target or transform dot parent. And of course we're gonna uh, declare the zooming factor or the current zoom distance in this one as well. So we're gonna create this one at first. So float zoom distance. It's going to be, well, nothing in here. We just set this one into awake. We're gonna say zoom distance is going to be equal to, and now we take the vector, the, the difference between. So vector three dot distance is going to be the distance between our target of position since we need a vector 3 in this particular case and not the type of transform so we say target of position and of course the transform of position uh, which is going to be the position of the current camera in this particular case so we're gonna have those three values only in a way we're gonna calculate them and that's pretty much fine okay looking into the update loop we're gonna need to define two um inputs and the first one is going to be the first click for the right mouse button the first click for the mouse wheel so in this particular case we check for if input get mouse button down and the mouse button we are after at first is the right click right click is going to be number one or represented by number one in here and of course you can copy and paste that stuff uh, over and we're gonna take number two which is going to be our mouse wheel button Okay, so the mouse wheel button is going to be when you're pressing down the mouse wheel deep into the mouse. Okay, so what we want to set is a vector which is going to be stored. Um, and yeah, we're going to need this one uh, for every input we're going to do. It's going to be of type vector3 and let's just call this one last position. And last position in this particular case is going to be equal to um, input dot mouse position so we want to know where the mouse currently is in our screen only two axes in y and in the x axis the z axis is basically not important for us but we want to store this particular position when we are first clicking the mouse down button or the uh, actually the mouse right button and the mouse middle button uh, we are not taking care of the left mouse button because we want to do all the other inputs we're using the left mouse key so I gonna ignore them so we just have the all that all the other things just with, uh, with the mouse wheel the mouse button and the right mouse what we also want to do is we want to declare two or in this case three new functions the first one is going to be called zoom uh, since autocomplete is doing what it's like we're gonna create them first so void zoom open close parentheses and open close a pair of curly braces in here we can uh, copy those two times so the next one is going to be maybe pan and the last one is going to be orbit so these are the functions we are going to create so and of course from uh, the update loop we want to call all of those functions so zoom pan and orbit meanwhile we are doing yeah, stuff in our game so for example, when we are zooming in and zooming out, we want to calculate some things 
um, to actually know where the zoom is coming from, what the distance is and how fast we are zooming and of course uh, to what position we want to zoom. Uh, we are not using the, um, the field of view in this case or uh, yeah, the clipping planes. We are gonna use an actual position of the camera. We just put the camera next to the target or drag it away or basically move it away by just its position, its vector 3 position. So what we need is a float. It's a, just a number and the number is represented by our input dot get axis and the axis we are after is just a string name in our inputs we can see this it's going to be called mouse scroll wheel so we, we are just scrolling around with our mouse so with that axis we just get an input between 0 and 1 and this 0 and 1 is going to determine our zoom distance so zoom distance minus equal whatever this input is in this case num so if we are going forward or backwards with our zooming and we want to implement another variable which is called scroll sensitivity so i'm gonna create a new float call this one scroll sensitivity and we can actually declare the, the sensitivity for or with any specific number we are after. In this case, I'm going to choose 3. So 3 times the num of the input is going to be the zoom distance B minus or set it to be minus. So we put in scroll sensitivity. When you need a faster scrolling, you can always increment this particular number. You can also put this one in a private mode. It doesn't really matter for you at the moment. You just want to know how this is going to work, I believe. Okay, the next one is we want to clamp our zoom distance. Uh, so we're not zooming one, yeah, 100 trillion of times and otherwise there will be a clipping when we are too close because of the look at to the camera. So we want to clip or actually clamp our zoom distance and we do that by setting zoom distance is going to be equal to massive.clamp and we want to clamp this one actually we want to clamp the value zoom distance and we want to clamp this one by a min and a maximum value and since we don't have that particular values we're gonna create them pretty quick so we have two floats the first one is going to be our min distance or zoom min distance it's up to you and another one is going to be our max distance you can also type all of those in one line but actually that is more interesting in here since we have the possibility to set the maximum and the minimum distance so maybe the minimum distance is going to be 3f and the maximum is maybe 10. you can always go and put those into a public one as well once again um, so if you are doing any changes later on it's going to be automatically set to be this so max distance is going to be equal to 10f min distance is going to be um, equal to 3f and what we're gonna do is in our clamp we just set min distance comma max distance so we're gonna have this zoom distance clamped no matter how far we are scrolling in this particular case and now we need to set a specific position where this zoom, zoom distance is coming in place so we'll create a new vector 3 or we'll call this one just position and the position for us is currently the target of position so the position of our main target we are after we can also put in some offset but we don't need to do that at the moment um, what we set is the position minus equal transform dot forward so we're gonna zoom to the forward or over the forward axis or actually in this particular case uh, the negative forward axis times our zoom distance so we know okay this particular uh, forward axis is yeah the negative forward axis um, times our zoom distance we have created in here and clamped of course now we need to set the target position or in this case the transform dot position which means which is the camera position and we need to set this one to vector3 dot lerp so we're gonna do a linear interpolation um, between two vectors so the starting vector is basically the transform dot position then we're gonna have the goal vector which is going to be pause the position we have calculated times our uh, yeah zoom distance and of course we want to have some kind of scroll sensitivity in here so we know how fast we are scrolling around that's it uh, for zooming so let's pretty quickly save and go to unity and see if that is working and once we are in our game we are able to zoom out and zoom in we are not able to pan and we are not able to rotate around that's what we are going to do next
Okay, so for panning, we just want to know if we are holding down um, the middle mouse key. So we say if input dot get mouse button, but not mouse button down, just go get mouse button since we want to hold down this one. And it's going to be number two, which is once again represented by the mouse wheel button in this particular case in the center. And we set or create a new vector. We call this one delta and delta is going to be equal to the input dot mouse position minus the last position. The last position, once again, we have created this one when we're clicking this particular button the first time um, into, in, inside the inputs. So with that calculated vector, we can just uh, translate the target. So target.translate. And now we can just use uh, the values we already have created. So delta x is going to be the x value, comma, zero, comma, delta dot y. And since this is going to be too fast in panning, we're going to need to uh, scale this one down. So we're going to need a pan sensitivity. So this is going to be of type float pan sensitivity. And we can set this one to a rather small number, maybe 0.05f. Don't forget to save often once again. And now we're going to calculate delta x times the pan sensitivity and the same for the delta y, so times pan sensitivity. Okay, and finally, after we have translated this one, we need to reset the, the last position. So we say last position is going to be equal to wherever our mouse is currently at. So in this case, it's input dot mouse position. Okay, let's test out panning. We're gonna save, wait for the compiler, and we are able now to zoom in and zoom out. Finally, we're gonna put in our orbit functionality. For this, we're gonna use the right mouse button. So we want to make sure that when we are holding this one down, we're gonna in, um, implement orbiting or use orbit functionality means we're gonna go and say input dot get mouse button but not down we want to hold it so we're gonna put it like this also we're gonna implement number one which is once again the right mouse button in this case and we're gonna do the same as we have done in pan and zoom or actually I believe just in pan we at first create a vector 3 call this one delta and the delta is once again going to be our input dot mouse position minus the last position now we calculate two angles the y angle and the x angle that are going to be the ones we are rotating around so the first is going to be a float the angle for the y axis and this is going to be minus delta dot y times and now we need a rotation sensitivity since we don't have this one. Uh, we're going to create this one pretty quick in the orbit part in here. So float rotation sensitivity. Once again, we can set this one to any yeah, value which is not too big and not too small. Maybe we're going to start with 0.5f and put any number later on to make this one faster or slower in the rotation. So we're going to use rotation sensitivity. Then we create a new angle. In this case, it's going to be for the x axis. In this case, it's going to be delta dot x times the rotation sensitivity. So now we know the amount of rotation we are currently doing when we are dragging with a right mouse button to the left or right or up or down according to those axes. And now we need to put this one into another vector. So vector 3 and I just call this one ankles. We don't use that for both but for one since we want to clamp one we need to do this step. So uh, what we're going to do is at first in here it's going to be we use or create the the well actually the x-axis at first. So for the x-axis we're going to store the ankle uh, or the ankles of the rotation target. 
So we say rotation target dot transform dot Euler angles. This is returning a vector, and we're gonna store this vector, whatever it's currently, uh, and store this in angles. Otherwise, we are not able to clamp a specific angle because we are not able to to do that directly on the Euler angles. The next one is we want to add to the angles x axis. So angles dot x plus equal. And what we're going to add is, of course, the angle y. So why are we using the y um, angle? Because we're ro rotating around the x-axis. And this is going to be the y angle in this case. Um, now we want to clamp this. So angles uh, dot x is equal to mass f dot clamp. And what do we want to clamp is, once again, angles dot x. And what we now say is the min and the max values. In my case, I'm going to use 10f, ADF. So these are going to be the angles in between we are clamping the camera around the rotation axis, basically. Well, not the, well, we are not clamping the camera, but the rotation target directly. And now we can put that into uh, the transformation now. So we're going to... Uh, basically bring the angles back to the rotation target since we are changing this one here um, meaning we're gonna take the complete rotation targets transform dot your angles and then we're gonna set those now to our angles vector so the one we have changed uh, this one in here we're gonna rotate stuff in here just for the x-axis in this case because we want to clamp it we don't want to clamp the y-axis, that's why we are not using this one in here directly. Um, even if we would be able to do the same calculation for the y-axis. But the point is, we are not using angles for the target, but uh, or actually not, uh, or only for the rotation target, but not for the uh, user target, the first, um, the, yeah, the first target. So that's why we're gonna have to do this for the target a bit different. So the target is just taking care of the y-axis uh, transformation or actually rotation. In this case, we're going to say target dot transform dot rotate around. And now we have three things we will need to enter in here. At first, the point where we are rotating around, which is going to be target dot position, which is our target vector in this case, comma. Then the next one is the axis. In this case, it's going to be the up axis. So we say vector 3 dot up. And the last one is going to be the angle. And in this case, we're going to pass in angle x. So the x angle we have calculated beforehand. Um, and since we are not, uh, or we don't need to clamp that angle, we can use it like this. And so we have two ways to manipulate the angle. So this one is just, or actually this complete part is just for the rotation part over the y-axis. This one is uh, only over the x-axis. And what we now need to do is we need to reset the last position. So we say in last position is going to be equal to input dot mouse position. Don't forget to save. And let's go back and test our camera controller now in its hopefully full setup. So let the compiler run and press play. And now we should be able to move around by panning with the middle mouse button. When we're holding this one down, we're going to be able to go back and forward. Y is not changing. We are just going left and right, uh, or actually left, right, and forward and backwards, but not in the height. So uh, later on, you might want to think about where you want to have your target to be. We are able to zoom in and zoom out to its maximum. We can always go in and fiddle around with the values, so we can zoom out a bit more. And when we now hold down the right mouse button, we are able to go up and rotate around. We can also go down, but not less than the 10 degrees angle we have set at this one too. And we can do that wherever you like and wherever we like, just by going in and going out about um, the values we are after. And that's how you create a camera, or actually in this particular case, a target camera. If you don't like the setup by when you're dragging right and you also want to drag uh, or the positions this one right, you just need to yeah, to change the axis, um, yeah, into the padding side. And that's everything I wanted to show you in here.
Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using PayPal to support me and my channel in the future. All links will be below in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.